I'm Noreen and welcome to my kitchen and another episode of What's for Dinner. Tonight we have a really awesome slow cooker recipe for you. Tonight we're going to be making mushu pork in the slow cooker. It's going to blow your mind how delicious this is. In the end we're going to make it two ways for you in a traditional mushu wrap but we're going to be using flour tortillas and in a mushu pork rice bowl. So let's go see how this all comes together. We're going to go over all the ingredients and I'm probably just going to throw this all into the crock pot as I'm explaining it to you. But I have my crock pot insert here and we're going to be making slow cooker mushu pork. This is really easy to do. What I have is one package of pork loin that has been thawed out and when you buy pork loin if you don't know you usually get two pieces of meat. I have a 16 ounce, ounce package of coleslaw mix. Now you can slice your own cabbage if you prefer. You're going to need about four cups of cabbage. So I'm adding another cup of shredded red cabbage and that's about a quarter of a small red cabbage and another cup of matchstick carrots. So what we're going to do is we're just going to throw this right on in there. All the veggies go in. and the cabbage here. All right. Now I'm just gonna take my hand that has been washed and give this a, just a little bit of a toss. I also have one medium onion that I have uh, quartered and sliced really thin. And we'll go ahead and just toss that in there. Um, I have two tablespoons of minced ginger. Now I just used fresh and I minced this myself. So go ahead and toss that in there. If you like less ginger or you don't have ginger but you really want to make this, um, go ahead and leave out the fresh ginger and just hit this with about a teaspoon of dried ginger. It won't give you the same heat but it will give you a ginger flavor. This is four very large cloves of garlic that I have sliced pretty thin and they're going to go in there too. Oh, and I'm razor blade thin. No, not like Polly. I can't do that. It's it's just it's too time intensive. That's mm. all. So Polly can sit and slice his garlic as thin as he likes, mm. but today we're going to just go with that. Okay. I'm just going to set this aside for a moment. And then I'm going to take our pork tenderloin. What I have here is I'm just going to sprinkle our tenderloin with a mixture of a teaspoon each, this is equal parts, of white pepper, pink Himalayan salt, garlic powder, and onion powder. Now, any of you who have been with me for any length of time have heard me say, I don't have white pepper, I don't keep white pepper, and I'm never going to get white pepper because it's just too froofy for me. But you're never too old to learn, and white pepper is a major component in most Asian dishes. So I went ahead and I got myself a little jar when I visited World Market for the first time. And I have to say, I didn't realize that the aroma and the flavor profile of white pepper is really different from black pepper. So you're never too old to learn something. And we're going to use the white pepper in this dish. Now I'm just going to mix this up. And we're just going to kind of sprinkle it generously over our pork tenderloin. And don't worry because this isn't going to be used for anything else. So the fact that I'm using my hands, I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just going to go ahead and move these over here to the side where it has not been seasoned. And there we go. Mushu pork's main flavor component is hoisin sauce. So I, uh, hoisin sauce is kind of uh, got a lot of ingredients so purchasing this is definitely something you'll want to do. Making your own, I'm sure you could, but to me I don't use it that often to make my own so I'm going to buy it. This is the brand I choose. This is also the same brand of teriyaki sauce that I like. Um, if I am not making my own teriyaki sauce, but um, this is soy ve and it's a hoisin garlic sauce. Um, this is awesome. So this is like, um, it's like Chinese barbecue sauce. Yeah, it's good. 
if you've never had hoisin That's sauce good. before. It's really, really good. We're just going to pour that whole thing right on in there. Don't worry too much about stirring it up or getting it even. Everything's going to work out for you because the, as this cooks throughout the afternoon, it's all going to do its job for you anyway. Mm -hmm. I may hit this bottle with a little water and shake it up to get it all out of there. I'm using a quarter cup of soy sauce. You can use reduced sodium soy. You can do half this amount of soy. You can leave the soy sauce out if you don't want it in there, if you don't have it. No worries, the hoisin is still going to give you a great flavor. The soy gives it a little richer flavor. Then we're going to hit this with about a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. Don't leave that out because it really does make a difference in the richness of the flavor. Um, my youngest daughter doesn't like it. Sometimes I overdo it with the sesame oil, so that's my fault. Remember, sesame oil, toasted sesame oil is extremely potent. So I know this looks like a lot of food, but a teaspoon is going to be just fine. I'm going to put a lid on this. I'm going to put it in my slow cooker on high for four to six hours. And when the vegetables are cooked and the pork tenderloin is able to be shredded with a fork, we're going to come back and show you what that looks like. So we'll be back and we'll show you what this looks like after it's had a nice warm nap and becomes beautiful and shreddable. All right, it has been several hours. Yes, maybe a little over six hours now. Now at the four hour mark, I neglected to wake Rick up from his nap so that we could finish actually do something that I didn't show you. So I'm going to tell you right now. And you'll want to refer to the recipe on the website so that you'll know exactly what to do at the right time. Once your meat is cooked all the way through and what's going to happen is the veggies are going to kind of turn into a sauce. It's going to be a little bit loose. It's going to smell amazing. The meat's going to easily shred apart for you. In fact, I literally shredded the meat with a pair of tongs just with one hand. That's how tender it was. Then I took two tablespoons of cornstarch and about a cup of cold water and I whisked them together and I poured them in here when it was on high and simmering and bubbling. And then I just stirred it right in and that slurry made a nice tight sauce and that's exactly what you want this to look like. Now, we're gonna serve our mushu like you would get at the restaurant with the tortillas or the rice pancakes, which is what you would normally get. But we're gonna use flour tortillas and we're gonna make wraps with this. And we're also going to make you a mushu pork rice bowl. And we have some toppings that we've cut up so that we have this whole beautiful um, visual and uh, just taste experience that you're really going to love. So we're going to go over to the counter and we're going to fix you um, the mushu pork two ways. Finish off our mushu pork two ways. We're gonna do two in wraps, and then we're gonna do a mushu pork rice bowl. So I have some white rice that I actually had left over in the fridge. We heated it up. I put it in my rice bowl here, and I topped it with a scoop of the mushu pork. Now I have over here some condiments or toppings that you can put out. I have some more red cabbage, some carrots. I have a red bell pepper that I cut up in thin strips, a few green onions that I shaved, and a, a Persian cucumber that I cut in super thin strips. So you can top this any way you like. And um, this is just to add a little extra crunch and goodness to your wrap and a little freshness too. I think. Well, there you go. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put some on the rice bowl as well. And like I said, that'll give it a really nice little crunchiness. Sit. If I have to. You have to. Okay, let's see if we can make this work. I always feed Rick. I don't know if you guys know that, but... How is that? Mmm. Mm. really good. Mmm. Yes. A lot of crunch in there, so. It's like a Chinese nice. taco. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good. Mmm. Mm. It's good. 
Then we also have the rice bowl. And I'm, you know, we just put a bit of, a little bit of rice in the bottom along with that mushu. And then, like my girls, sometimes they don't want to do the whole wrap thing. So you just mix it up with the rice, and that's a perfect little meal. Or lunch. I mean, you could easily take that with you for lunch during the day to work or wherever. So, yeah. Slow cooker mushu pork. I mean, how can you go wrong? You can't go wrong. That's how you can go. You just can't do it. Mm -hmm. So... If you like this recipe, I hope you will consider giving me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the real food for real people, real easy recipes that we present every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on our YouTube channel and straight from our kitchen. Be sure and hit the email notifications so that whenever I upload, you'll get a notification in your email and you'll be able to come right away and look at the video. So, I hope you give this slow cooker mushu pork a try, and I hope that you love it. I don't know how you can't love it. It's absolutely phenomenal. And until next time, I'll see ya! You can use whatever chili powder you prefer. You can make this spicy by going ahead and adding some um, cayenne pepper to this, or you can add chipotle powder. If you want to take this a step further, you can add onion powder and garlic powder in here if you like. It's all up to you. But for me, this is very similar to that uh, tahine or tagine seasoning that you can often find in the produce section.